one of the most common energies that are studied when you're doing foundational physics is going to be kinetic energy. So the word kinetic you have run into in numerous places. So from kinematics in terms of studying basically motion, right, in your first chapters in physics, uh, you know, kinetic, you had friction as well. So that had to do something with objects moving and friction is um, the actual force, okay, that opposes that motion. Well, kinetic, okay, in the terms of energy, again, has something to do with moving objects. So in particular, as you can see there on the screen, so kinetic energy is nothing else but just simply energy, which has the capacity to do work uh, of a moving object. And now typically this moving object is thought of as an external moving object. So, you know, maybe a runner who's running, you know, the car which is moving, the bird which is flying, um, you know, the hammer, okay, which maybe you're swinging and it's moving. So those are all kind of external items that we can um, sense in some way. Now, this particular kinetic energy is really solely related, or at least you can relate it, solely to basically the speed of that particular object and then its mass. So if there is no speed, so if it's not moving at all, so if the speed is zero, then it's not going to have any kinetic energy. So there's not going to be any energy due to the actual motion of that object. Now, the formula for kinetic energy is not very difficult. It is kinetic energy simply equal to one half times the mass of the object times the velocity or really the speed because we're just talking about the magnitude squared and the SI unit. So the actual SI unit for the um, standard is joules because again, it just relates back to the ability or capacity to do work. So where does this actual formula come from? It's not very, very hard to try to take it and apply it. If someone gives you the mass and the actual speed of the object, you can just substitute it in and then you can find out what that kinetic energy is. And then that total energy, assuming that there's not going to be any kind of losses in terms of uh, energy. So the efficiency really is 100 percent. Then you're going to have that energy to be able to use it to do some hopefully useful work while that object is moving. And as you're doing the work, then the object kind of tends to slow down until basically all the kinetic energy kind of dissipates or it has been used. So coming back to the problem of trying to figure out where this comes from, it's not super difficult to be able to derive, but I do want to be able to show you where it does come from. So if you recall, can you take a step back in terms of work? So what we are going to ask is what is the amount of work that you would need to do in order to get an object to move at a particular speed? Now, if that's the work that has been done to get it to move to some speed V, then that is the actual energy that has been transferred from one source to another source. And that transfer of energy, so that work that you actually have to do is going to be transferred into that actual object moving. And when it's in motion, now you have that okay, amount of work, which is now stored in that particular object due to its movement. So if you recall, so this is nothing else, but you know, the force that you have multiplied by the actual displacement that you're carrying out, and then this is going to be cos okay, of the angle in between the actual two. Now, we are assuming that we're going to be taking the magnitudes of these, but really what happens is that you have your actual force and then you have your displacement, whatever that you have. Okay, so this is the two vectors okay, that you're working on and then this is your angle in between them. Now, you should be familiar with this concept of work and I'll put up a link up above there to kind of remind you if you need that. Okay, because I'm going to be assuming that you're familiar with this formula. Now, technically, when you are doing work, then the actual, um, the force, okay, so the vector force, so this particular F, and then this cos theta, really is just the projection, okay, that you have of this vector onto the same direction as you would have your actual object moving. So this displacement, so these two are aligning. So we're going to be assuming 
that you're going to be taking the actual net force that you have. So all the forces that are combined that are in the direction of the displacement. So really, so this combination so of these two items, so item one and item two, which is really just that right there, this is going to be, I'm going to call this F net, which is very similar to what you're used to when you were talking about dynamics and Newton's second law. So that's all the forces that you're going to have. And then the net force in the direction of the displacement is nothing else but simply the net force as we have here. So then the work equation just kind of comes down to basically, well, what's the magnitude of my F net? And then what's the magnitude of my displacement? And if I have that, I can calculate the amount of work that is being done in order to get this particular object to move at a particular speed V. Now, this speed that you will have okay, is going to be the speed that the object is moving. And that's what we kind of want to be able to see. All right, so well, let's break this down. So first of all, the net force okay, that you have from, this comes from Newton's second law, is nothing else but mass multiplied by the average acceleration that you would have, or mass times acceleration. Now, of course, acceleration is a vector, and then so is F net. But here I'm going to drop the vector form because I'm assuming that I am in the direction, in this case it's to the right, of my displacement. All right, so let's think about that. So that's number one. Now, number two, okay, comes down from the fact of, well, I may want to be able to find out what this actual displacement is. Well, from kinematics, as you're moving along, you may recall that the actual displacement, one of the equations, okay, is nothing else but simply your initial speed that you have. This is going to be multiplied by the change in time plus, okay, this will be half of the acceleration that you are moving at, and then this is going to be times your delta t squared. So that is the actual equation for the displacement. Now, when you are taking an object and as you're moving along, then, well, if you have an object and you're doing the actual work to get it to move, so if I have an object, let's say this is my object right here, and I'm going to try to get it to move eventually at a speed, so this would be my final speed, so this is my V, okay, so this is just simply my V. So if you want to get it to move from a certain speed, well, you have to be asking, okay, well, what speed did it initially have? And now we're assuming, okay, when you're starting off, well, any object, um, since it's not moving, it's not going to have any speed at all, and therefore it's not going to have any kinetic kind of energy because it's not moving. So there hasn't been any work done on this object. And then when you do start to apply work, so as you're going through here and you start to apply work, Okay, on this particular object, so as you start to apply a force, okay, and that force is now taking and it's displacing this object, okay, and that is actually getting it to a particular speed. So if initially we started at zero, then this is going to help us quite a bit because of the fact that now I can take this entire thing and I can say, well, this is nothing else but zero because my object started from basically rest. It's, it wasn't moving at all. So then this will be just my delta D, which is nothing else but one half times whatever acceleration you were moving at. And then this is gonna be delta T, okay? And that delta T is going to be squared. Okay, so now we have my two set of equations. Now, why do I need those two set of equations? Well, this goes back to the fact that I need my F net right here, and I need to multiply it by my displacement, which is gonna be right there. So now I can take these two and I can multiply them together. So I'm going to take this right here. So that's gonna be my F net. So that is the total work that is being done is just mass times acceleration. So that's my F net. And then I need my displacement, and my displacement, if I started off from an initial speed of zero, would not be nothing else but one half times acceleration and then delta t squared. And this is what I would have right there. Now I'm gonna manipulate this, so it's kind of starting to look like what I, what I want to have. So I'm gonna take out this one half, I'm gonna put it right in front there. 
Okay, I have my mass, which is gonna be my mass over here. So, so far, so good. Now, all of a sudden, notice that I have my A and I have another A. So this would mean that I have an A squared or acceleration squared. And then I also have my delta T squared. Now, I don't technically know what my delta T is, okay, at the moment, but that would be the total time that it would take to actually accelerate this object to a speed, okay, of V, so to that final particular speed. So this, again, goes back to a little bit of manipulation with your math. So if you recall, so here's your exponent right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say this is my average, right, acceleration multiplied by T, and I'm going to take out the squared and I'm going to put it outside, like I do have it right there. Now, the question is, hmm, well, what is this exactly equal to, right? So this is acceleration, okay, which is your average acceleration, and then it's multiplied by delta T. So please recall, well, what was acceleration defined as? Okay, so acceleration is defined as, okay, your change in velocity divided by your change in time. So hold on a second. Well, if I manipulate this, what I'm going to get is A, and I can move this over. I can multiply both sides by delta T, and that's going to give me a delta V. Well, this delta V is nothing else but your actual change in speed. But your change in speed is V final minus V initial. And V initial was zero, right? Because you were starting the object from zero. So really, this is nothing else but just simply V final, which you know we said was the actual speed that we would be accelerating to. And that brings you basically to the end of this derivation of the formula. So you're going to have your one half. That's your one half. You're going to have your mass. Okay, so that's the mass of the object. Now notice that this right here, so my A times delta T, is nothing else but V, so this is going to be V squared, and that is the total work that is needed in order to get the object to move at a particular speed. And once you do move, okay, and you provide that work, so what you have done is you've taken some energy, okay, so possibly maybe, you know, if it's a runner, then it's coming from internally from you, okay? You're transferring that energy, so you're doing work, okay, onto an object so that the object itself now has a particular speed that it's moving at. Well, that amount of work, okay, that you have right here, well, that's just this, okay, right there. And now all of a sudden, what has happened is you've transferred one energy from one source Two, okay, providing kinetic energy for the object itself so that it can move. And there you have it. So that's the derivation of kinetic energy formula, okay? Now, in order to apply it, I'm going to just show you one little small example to end this video. Now, when you are doing this in physics, if your teachers are, um, if they're kind enough to you, some people will say they're mean, they might ask you about the derivation of this. And this is actually really nice to be able to show and explain to somebody. But you certainly are going to be running into these in foundational physics classes where you have to actually apply and find out, okay, so how much energy do you have due to motion of an object? So here we have a runner, and this runner has a particular weight. So notice the weight is 170 pounds. If you recall, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds, okay, if you do the conversions. So here, if I would write this out in terms of givens, so I'm going to just do this. So this is my weight, and your weight is equal to 170 pounds, and I can certainly transfer this to mass by simply doing the conversion. So that's going to be one kilogram, okay, all over. This is 2.2 pounds, so the pounds will cancel and I can figure out what the actual mass is for this. So that will give me the mass. So the mass equals, maybe let me do that, 170 divided by 2.2 is about 77.27, etc. So 77, you know, 0.27. This is going to be in kilograms. Now we need 
this to be in kilograms because when we're substituting it back into the kinetic equation, we want mass to be in kilograms and we want our speed to be in meters per second if we want to have the units, okay? So the standard units for energy, which would be joules, all right? So here, if I now continue, it says that the runner is moving at a speed. So we now have a speed. This is 4.85 meters per second. So great, standard units, standard units. And now I can go ahead and find out what the kinetic energy is. And that would be nothing else but simply plugging it back into my formula. So one half, okay, now my 77.27 multiplied by my actual speed, which is gonna be 4.85. We're gonna to have to square that. And then we can obtain what our result is. So now since I have this already, I'm gonna just kind of leave it as I have it there. Multiplied by 4.85, now I have to square this. And then I can't forget, you know, I have to multiply by the half or by just simply 0 0.5. So that's gonna be approximately 908.8. You know, I'm gonna just round this to two significant figures. So let's say 210 joules, okay? So this is what you would have. Now, you might kind of question this and say, hmm, in terms of units, okay? So as you were working this along, notice that the mass itself was in kilograms, right? And then the actual speed, so if you take a look at it, it was in meters per second, but it's squared. So this is gonna be square and square. And this, okay, as you're looking through this, indeed, okay, is actually Newton meters. And this comes from the fact that a Newton is nothing else but kilogram. And then this is meters per second squared. So notice that's mass times acceleration and then multiplied by your extra little meter there. And that's why this is equal to joules. This is a, a good exercise for you to think about in terms of units and remembering that Newton meter is a joule, but so is kilograms, meters squared over seconds squared, or in other words, kilograms times meters per second squared times a meter. And we don't like writing all of this junk, so that's why we started to utilize the SI units of joules. All right, so that is it. I hope now you have a good sense of how to apply the kinetic energy formula, and also that you know that it comes from simply the amount of work that is done to take an object and get it to a particular speed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.